Hey guys, my name is Matsumio, and today I'm happy to say that we have finally learned more information about what we can be expecting from the year two DLC for Rainbow Six Siege. Ubisoft has just made an announcement and released the season pass for us to buy, and it's gonna have in it eight new operators that are gonna span across four seasons, much like season one. We're gonna get eight exclusive headgear and uniform customization, a carbon charm, and 600 rainbow credits. If it sounds similar to season one, it's because it should, because I think the only difference is that they've actually confirmed that we are going to be getting headgear and other customization options. Now all of this sounds fantastic, but it really begs the question, how in the world are they going to be able to bring in eight new operators that are different and unique from all of the others? It sort of seems that especially with this most recent DLC, Red Crow, that Ubisoft is having to go into the realm of science fiction to actually bring in unique operators that impact the gameplay. Echo is a prime example of this. His drone can literally fly attached to a roof and then has a cloaking device. Even Habana's gadget feels like it's entering the realm of science fiction. And so it makes me really curious how Ubisoft is going to be bringing in eight more of these operators and keeping it within the realm of possibility. And so what I wanted to do today is go over some ideas of operators that have a high chance, or I believe have a high chance, of making an appearance in year two. You guys have submitted some great ideas for Sunday Mailbox, I've kind of jotted some down of my own, and I just thought this would be a fun talk topic to talk about because it's going to be really interesting to see how Ubisoft creates eight more and brings them into Rainbow Six Siege. And so the first one that a lot of people have recommended is having some sort of non-lethal trap operator on defense. The way that it would work is very similar to Capkin. He could place his gadget on a door or window frame, but instead of the enemy being greeted by a fireball explosion when they pass through the trap, it's just going to make a really loud noise kind of like the metal detectors do. The benefit of this guy is that he basically gives you an early warning of where the enemy is coming from. If you're all alone on the objective and the enemy is coming from all angles but you don't know exactly where they're coming from, you can have this on a couple of the door frames, watch one one angle and as soon as the enemy passes through the other behind you, you're going to know exactly where they are. Now the gadget itself would need to be very difficult for people to see. This is not a Capkin trap where you're getting a kill directly. You might get a kill indirectly because of the information that you got from it, but you're still having to shoot the enemy yourself. This isn't just giving you a free kill like Capkin, and so it wouldn't make sense to have that red wire fly across the screen. Now, all in all though, I do think that this guy has a higher probability of making his way into Rainbow Six Siege. It follows the same design philosophy as some of the other operators. It basically takes the same mechanic of the metal detectors, but allows you to control where you want to place them. And while of course this is purely speculation, I would not be surprised if we saw this guy in year two. Another idea that is highly requested is to have a blackout operator. The way that he would work is that he can flood either the entire map into darkness or a certain section of it. So if you are on offense and you need to get onto the objective room but you're having a hard time doing so, he can just kind of flip a switch and then everything turns into darkness and you can push him through the doorway. Lights go back on and you're in a different position and hopefully you're going to be able to take out the enemy from that new location. Sounds really cool in concept. The downside of this guy though, or not really the downside, but the issue with him is that I think that Ubisoft would have to go into every single one of the maps and rework the lighting. Uh, if you guys have ever played as Thatcher, you know that you have the ability to turn off the lights. You throw the EMP grenade and the lights turn off for a couple of seconds, but the light inside of the room doesn't really change. I have a suspicion, of course this is speculation, that they would have to go in and rework their entire lighting on every single one of these maps for this to actually be a possibility. On top of that, how useful would this guy actually be on a daytime map? Unless you know the defenders are in the basement itself, he's probably not going to be all that effective. And so while I love the concept of this guy, he's really cool, at least compared to some of the other ideas, uh, this is probably one of the ones that are, is, is less likely to make its way into Rainbow Six Siege. Uh, another one that I've heard a lot is having a ladder operator. Now you might be thinking, wait, a, a ladder? He's going to have a ladder. That doesn't sound all that interesting. Well, well, the reason why I say this is that a very long time ago, people found in the game files that there was some sort of operator in the game that said, climb this. This led a lot of people to speculate that there's gonna be some sort of guy that could either use a ladder to allow you to get up a trap door, so you could be on the first floor, break open the trap door, and then mosey on up this ladder and get to the second, or you could have some sort of indoor grappling hook. Now, the reason why I think this guy might be interesting is that not only would it open up more flanking routes, which could be very powerful, at least on certain maps, uh, but also it could allow you to hit enemies from angles that they're just simply not expecting. If you're playing on a map and this guy allows you to hit it from a higher angle, uh, you can open up a murder hole and then shoot them from above. 
maybe not completely game changing, but if an enemy is expecting you to be on the ground floor and all of a sudden you're shooting them from a slightly higher angle, that might give you a slight advantage. And while it's difficult to tell how useful this guy would actually be, it's hard to argue that it wouldn't change up the meta. Being able to hit enemies from different angles, being able to have different flanking routes would change the way that we play on certain maps, and for that very reason, I think that we also might see this guy add into the game. Uh, one operator that I would love to see added on in is one that has access to a gadget that can make gun noise or just noise in general. If you want to get onto the objective but you want to confuse the enemy, place this gadget on outside of a window, make your way onto another flanking route, activate the gadget so it starts to shoot or make some sort of noise, the enemy of course thinks that they're getting shot from a window, they look in that general location, you swoop on in from the other side and take them out. This would be very similar to the decoy grenade from Counter-Strike GO, but of course you'd have more control over it. You could turn it on and off whenever you want to, so that you can really simulate and make the enemy think that someone is outside of that window. This also might just be a great way at confusing the enemy and making enough noise so they can't hear you running across the room. If someone is just shooting constantly, it makes it much more challenging to hear those footsteps around you, and it might just be enough of a distraction so you can also make those quick flanks and take them out as well. And then finally, I think it'd be pretty cool to have a defensive shield operator. That would really mix things up, but also maybe an operator on offense that has three speed and one armor, but also has access to a shield. All the shield operators right now are slow and clunky and make a lot of noise. It'd be kind of cool to have one that makes almost no, no, no noise and can just get up into the enemy's face to use that shield effectively. Uh, but yeah guys, those are the operator ideas that I think at least have a fair chance of making an appearance in year two. I hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any operator ideas that you would love to see add into Rainbow Six Siege. They're going to be adding in eight more. I believe that brings the tally up to 36, which is just ridiculous. And so if you guys have any cool ideas, if there's any operators that you would love to see added into the game, let me know down below. Uh, but yeah guys, until tomorrow, have a good one and take it easy.